inventory management. Inventory is an extremely important concept in supply chain as it absorbs many dollars. In this particular chapter, we're going to do what is called ABC analysis, which basically has to do with prioritizing what inventory you pay more attention to and what inventory you pay less attention to. Cycle counting, simply counting your inventory. Basic economic order quantity model or EOQ or sometimes just referred to as QOPT or Q. We're also going to calculate the reorder point and determine some safety stock. The production order quantity, which is slightly different from the basic EOQ model, we'll go through. We're going to do the quantity discount model and we're going to talk about different service levels. The goal of inventory is to have just the right amount. Too much inventory costs you money in the fact that you have waste, spoilage, obsolescence, all kinds of things. And not enough inventory also costs you money in the fact that your customer service levels will not be high enough as you will have stock outs and other stock tags. Three major types of inventory are raw materials, WIP, work in process, and finished goods. A more minor but still important type of inventory is things like cleaning supplies, rags, you know, paper uh, in some cases. So oils to keep the equipment running. You can apply the models to all four, but the big three are raw materials, whip, and finished goods. ABC analysis. Quite often in your life, you have some items that have a low quantity, but they're high dollars. For example, house, car, big screen TV would be low quantity, but high dollars. Then you have other things on the that are on the other end, class C, that are large quantity, but low dollars. So for example, rice. You probably have more rice in your house than any other particular item, but it is low dollar value per grain of rice. So you don't count or pay attention to how many grains of rice you have in your house. Same as Home Depot. Home Depot sells refrigerators, which are much more expensive than a nail. They have a bin with nails in it that you can just go and take and they don't pay attention to how many nails they have, but they pay a great deal of attention to the large dollar items such as refrigerators or stoves or some expensive equipment that they have. So it basically helps you to prioritize, not based on quantity, but based on dollar value. So here's some examples. We'll go through with the, the software. The software doesn't do anything that you can't do yourself, but it does one added uh, prioritization or classification. It will sort the, what is an A, what is a B, and what is a C item. In this particular case, there's, there's no hard and fast rules with what percentage of the inventory has to be an A. So if I'm looking at this as a student and I look at item 12760, is that an A item or a B item? By using the software, we will then have uh, it broken down for us. It will assign it correctly. If I'm looking at this, even as an instructor, I might want to assign that item as an A item. It's borderline. So the software will not make it borderline. It will make the decision for us. So the C items you can see are large numbers of units. 14075 is 2,000 units, but it's only 60 cents each. And it only represents a half of 1% of the annual dollar volume of all your inventory. Organizations know this information. It helps you to prioritize your time. So you can see this in a graph form. A items, smaller quantities usually, large dollar items. So even a Best Buy will not have the most expensive TV in their showroom. 
their most expensive TV could be eighty or hundred thousand dollars. They cannot afford to have one of those in each one of their showrooms. It's just too much money to have tied up. Whereas having photocopying paper or or ink cartridges for printers, it's important that they have those items in because they're lower dollar values. Cycle counting. It is important that you count your inventory on a regular basis. And depending on the type of industry you are in, you may need to count it more frequently than others. I had a student a few years ago who worked at a liquor store, and because of the high level of theft in the liquor store, they counted inventory every day. They counted they would go through the store and their job eight hours a day was counting inventory. They found it really rather tedious, made it very clear that they hope to not have to do that for a career, but depends on, it can be done once a year at least. And a lot of organizations will do it at, say twice a year. When I worked for London Drugs, we did it twice a year. You have two major types of costs, holding costs sometimes called carrying costs. Those are things like insurance, refrigeration, heating, spoilage, damage, obsolescence, security, uh, opportunity costs with your interest. Now I'm gonna combine ordering and setup costs. They're very similar. And in the formulas, they're interchangeable. So the formulas you're gonna see in a, in a moment or two, Ordering costs are when you place an order for an external good, and setup cost is exactly what it says, setting up the particular machine. So some of you leave your computer on all the time, so you basically tap the keyboard and it comes back to, quote, life. So you otherwise you could turn your computer off and then have to turn it on, and then that time that it takes to come back on would be a setup time. They both have the same uh, effect in the formulas. You either have an ordering cost or a setup cost. So drive into the grocery store is an ordering cost. Once you've got the groceries and you put them on your shelves or in your refrigerators or deep freezes, those are holding costs. So we're going to find out how much we need to order each time we place an order or make a production run. The basic EOQ model is exactly that. Demand is known, it's constant. Lead time is also known and it's constant. So you sell the same amount every day for demand or, and it takes exactly three days to replenish your stock. Never two, never four. You get all of your goods at once, which is point number three. So if you order 17, you get all 17. There's no partial shipments. There's no quantity discount. So all the units are the same price. So variable costs are setup and holding. Stockouts can be avoided. So you would have no negative inventory or out of stock tags. As you can see, this is represented graphically. The average inventory is the half the distance between the peak and the minimum, which is simply Q, because the minimum is zero, simply Q divided by two. Your trade-off is this. If you went grocery shopping once a year, you would minimize setup or ordering costs. You would drive to the grocery store, get your groceries, pile them in your vehicle, and bring them home. The problem with that is, now, once you get them home, because you've got a year's worth of groceries, you need more deep freeze space. You need more shelving to put the units on. Plus, you're out of pocket money, which will cost you at least opportunity cost. If you went grocery shopping every day and bought just enough food for the day, you would have no in, no food at the end of the day. You wouldn't have to store it. You wouldn't have to have security on it because there's nothing to secure. 
The problem with that is you're going to the grocery store every day. And so you're maximizing your setup costs. Your goal is not to minimize setup costs. Your goal is not to minimize holding costs. You minimize your total cost is your goal. And that occurs where the two lines intersect. So when the two cost lines intersect, it means they're the same. So you'll see when we do calculations on total costs, that holding costs and setup costs will be the same for EOQ and POQ, which is production order quantity, but it's different under quantity discount. Don't worry about the formulas. They're just here for background. They're, they're built into the software, already done for you. So the, all these calculations are done for you. Now, reorder points has to do with when do you place the order? EOQ has to do with how much do you order, but it doesn't tell you when. So this is how you determine the stock level when you are going to order something. So you take the daily demand, which is little d, and you multiply by the lead time. So it's very simple. If you use or consume three units a day, and it takes six days to replenish, you simply take... 3 times 6, you get 18, and when you have 18 units left, it's time to order more. But you have to then use EOQ to determine how much do I order. So it just tells you when to order, which is a very important factor. So here's a graphic representation of reorder point. And an example, in this case, you have 32 units a day. It takes three days to replenish. When you have 96 units left, you would place an order. POQ. The biggest difference is you get your goods in a partial shipment. So in EOQ, if you ordered 300 units, you get all 300. In POQ, you get 100 one day. 100 later on and another 100 so it's that's why it's flatter so this the ascending line is sloped not perfectly vertical the reason why it's called production order quantity is this is typically what happens when you have or make the product yourself so if you make the product yourself then you can take it off the line. You don't have to wait for the entire batch to be done in some cases, depending on the, the type of product it is. You can take parts of it. So if it's partially done, then you can do the next stage, which might be put icing on the cupcakes or whatever the case may be. <coughs> Quantity discount model is actually the most difficult of the three to calculate. I'm thrilled that we use Excel for this. When I presented this problem by hand, it takes an hour of class time to present it by hand. And the class average tends to be, well, not that great. But when we have the software that has the formulas built in, it calculates the answers for us, and we do it in less than five minutes. The reason that it's more difficult is that smooth total cost curve becomes jagged. So you have di different quantity discounts. You have different prices for the models. It's the only one that actually has price of the goods built into it. So you wind up with, it looks like a, a, a saw blade that's jagged edge. It goes down, drops, then goes back up, then, then drops. So it, it looks like zigzag so it's time to do some calculations <laughs> 